So, uh, precipitation, hydrological cycle, right? Um, and this looks like a lot of rain. So this actually is one of the things I've already been kind of talking about. When you see a milky white cloud, that's what the slide is talking about. Think that it's milky white for some reason. The sun's light is interacting with something, and it, the sun's light is interacting with liquid particles in the cloud, liquid or solid. And actually, it's a type of um, uh, type of non-selective scattering. Means that all wavelengths are scattered, not just blue light like Raleigh scattering. All colors of the rainbow are scattered. So it's called multiple scattering. Makes it white. So we're going to talk more about this. This is my rain. Okay, we're going to talk more about that. But one of the things that has to first get started is basically within that chunk of air, we talked about the lifting condensation level, within that chunk of air, we need um, for condensation to begin. So it starts with actually little things we call cloud condensation nuclei. This is where I like to tell students, if your mother ever told you don't eat snow because it's dirty, yes. <laughs> Usually rain particle, rain, any sort of precipitation, whether it's snow or rain, started out with something called a cloud condensation nuclei that got it going. Okay. So cloud condensation nuclei are like the little piece of dirt or something, okay, that get the condensation part process started. So later in, in part five, though, we're going to talk about it. There has to be more than just that initial condensation nuclei. Because honestly, after, so your air is saturated, okay, your air is at 100% relative humidity, and basically these little cloud condensation nuclei provide a place for your gas, your water vapor to go ahead and liquefy. Well, once that starts, then your air is no longer saturated, okay? So something else has to happen. Um, so there's two types of cloud condensation nuclei, two, two types of dirt, and it, it's, it's kind of weird. One loves to do it, one's a party goer. Those would be the hygroscopic CCN, cloud condensation nuclei. If you read the description, those are the ones that are like, yes, hygroscopic, they're talking about water loving. They're like, yes, let's get this party started. And then there are the reluctant cloud condensation nuclei that don't necessarily want to get the party started, but they will. They don't even like water. They provide that surface for condensation to begin with in the cloud. Okay, those are called hydrophobic. Phobic meaning fear of. All right, <clears throat> so 10 main types of clouds. And actually, Mr. Slee reminded me there actually is an 11th type of cloud that I think has officially been dubbed, and I'll kind of show you what that one is coming up. But we have these like little root words. You've already seen the strato and cumulo root word. Okay, strato meaning flat, cumulo meaning fluffy. Okay, we, we kind of mix and match. And then we talk about altitude, and you heard him talk about there's three altitude. There's the low, there's the middle, we use an alto prefix for that. Then there's the high, and we use zero prefix for that. So in other words, if a cloud is here, a low-level cloud, it doesn't get designated with regard to its, you know, it has no designation. Yeah. And then the last thing, is it raining or not? Okay, so you'll see, um, actually they talked about the two rain clouds, the nimbostratus, you'll see the NIMB somewhere. There's the nimbostratus, and then there's the cumulonimbus. Okay, those are the two precipitating clouds. And they have NIMB in them there somewhere. So we kind of mix and match these to get to the type. Okay, so, with the fluffy ones, what the, I put together the slide to kind of talk about the fluffy ones, the cumulo-ish fluffy ones. There are fluffy ones that are low level, fluffy ones that are alto level, alto cumulus, and then there are fluffy ones that are high ones, the, the zero cumulus. And you can gauge how, how, what level they are by how big they are. So basically, and I got this from somewhere, basically you extend your arm and you hold your fist up, okay? And if it if it actually takes your entire fist to cover it, then that must be a pretty low level. So it's a cumulus cloud. Cumulus, remember, meaning it's not alto or zero, it's, it's a low-level cumulus cloud, okay? If it's about the size of your thumb, 
okay, then that must be a middle cloud, so we'll call that alto cumulus. Size of your pinky, okay, the little puffs, okay, it must be an upper level cloud, so that's cirro cumulus. So that's kind of, so cumulus, um, alto cumulo, alto cumulus, cirro cumulus. So that's three ways to kind of knock those out. And just to kind of get you thinking about it, Every cloud has, I think it's two letters, to describe what cloud it is, each of those ten. So CU stands for cumulus. What does AC stand for? Alto cumulus. CC, cirro cumulus. So, all right. So I like this figure. I think this is the same one that's in your textbook. And over here, you know, we talked about the low. Oops. We talked about the low, the middle, and the high. And so here's the low, the middle, and the high. So if you kind of take here and draw uh, that way, you kind of have your designation. Okay, so alto stratus, alto cumulus. See, we heard these on the video, didn't we? Uh, down here we have stratus, cumulus, nimbostratus. Okay, cumulus is actually um, has what we call vertical development. Hopefully you're okay with the vertical, horizontal, vertical development. Um, and then, of course, uh, we have the precipitation down here. That's the nimbo part of it. Then we have three types of high clouds. They all have the zero sort of word in them. So we have cirrostratus, cirro cumulus, and just plain old cirrus. To me, cirrostratus and cirrus, they're both high-level wispy clouds, but cirrus are the highest of the two. Yeah. So I like this little thing. One of my favorite words, or one of my favorite things that makes me smile is the mackerel sky. Okay. Every once in a while I'll kind of pull that in as part of a... Okay, that actually is the little puffs up high. So zero cumulus. You might be wondering, Mrs. Snipes, do I need to memorize the two-letter abbreviation? No, but it can kind of, you'll see me use them a little bit. When we talk about storm clouds, it'll be cumulonimbus, CB. So, okay. So then I just have some slides for each one of them. Um, starting with the low clouds, we have stratus clouds. Those actually, um, I like what he said, what the video, what she or she said um, about um, fog is basically a cloud at ground level. It is. Okay. Um, going up a little bit, we from stratus we have the stratocumulus. That's one of my least favorite clouds. I thought the video did a good job in actually talking about how clouds can kind of morph into other types of clouds. Okay. But to me it's like an oxymoron. It's like strato cumulus. Wait, those are two different things, right? Okay, but it's a relatively low cloud that has flat and some fluff to it. Um, then still low clouds are cumulus clouds with possibly some vertical development. So those are the three low ones. Um, there are the fair weather cumulus where nothing comes of them. They go away when the when it becomes nighttime, the fair weather cumulus. And then there are the cumulus that might develop into something because of moisture content or because of the instability in the atmosphere. Cumulus congestus, which may segue into cumulonimbus. Numbers. So here's pictures of those three. We have the stratus, the stratocumulus, and just miscellaneous cumulus clouds. Uh, nimbo stratus, nimbo, nimbo, precipitating, stratus meaning flat, right? Uh, cumulonimbus cloud, uh, those are your thunderstorm clouds. Um, I'm going to show you a picture, if you haven't seen them before, of kind of these pouchy looking things that can be associated with your thunderstorm cloud underneath the, the anvil portion. So here's a picture of cumulonimbus cloud and nimbostratus cloud. Thank you, Wikipedia. The middle level clouds need to have the word alto in them. So in chapter 16, we're going to be talking about rainbows and such. And in chapter 16, one of the things I'm going to hold you accountable to know is this idea of a corona 
and a halo. Okay, that's actually, I think they talked about them on the video. Um, a halo basically is a circle around either the sun or the moon, and it's caused by um, these thin clouds. So alto stratus, um, alto cumulus, alto stratus, alto cumulus, kind of come right back to left again. <coughs> the three high ones, cirro cumulus, um, the cirro stratus, and cirrus. And I liked, and we'll be talking more about this when we talk about um, reading the clouds, which was the title of this video. But actually, if you have these high-level clouds that segue to thicker and lower clouds, it's quite possible that you're in for some sort of precipitation, especially if it's a classic high-level cloud. You may be just kind of having some overrunning with a warm front. So it might not be the severe weather. Um, severe weather often comes with cold fronts instead of warm fronts. So here we have an upper left, we have cirrus, um, cirrocumulus, and cirrostratus. You can see the halo in the cirrostratus. Mm -hmm. Yep, the sun has a halo around it. Exactly. So I like what your textbook, or what the video did too, it talked about this other type of cloud, man-made cloud. <laughs> So one of the terms I want you to know is the term contrail, if you've never used it before. Contrail are those things that come from jets. The con part <laughs> stands for condensation. So, and they are an indication to me how long they linger. If they linger for a long time, basically there's all sorts of moisture up there. If basically the jet, the jet lays their contrail and the contrail disappears, that means it's pretty darn dry up. So based kind of how long they linger is an indication of what's going on in the upper atmosphere. Okay. Now there's all sorts of, anybody in here familiar with the whole, because um, my son's a conspiracy theory, not the thing about the, these condensation trails are not as innocent as they appear. Basically they're spraying chemicals. I saw something on the Discovery Channel, I think, and there was like, they make clouds, they're controlling our weather. Oh yeah, that's know. something yeah. else too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, the harp, the modifying the weather sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of them. But th this is actually where they're kind of like crop dusters, where they're actually um, purposely putting chemicals in, in our atmosphere to control us. Yeah, it's like I see lizard people, that sort of thing. Yeah, I know. I, mean, I, know. I feel like fluoride in the water holds more ground as a conspiracy theory than it. That. You know, um, yeah, Craig, my our son, believes the whole fluoride thing too. And actually, he lives in Vancouver, Washington, right now. He just moved out there last summer, and they fantastic place. That's what I've heard. We're gonna visit this summer. Fantastic place. <laughs> we'll have to talk. Everybody should move there. Uh, he loves it, and he Everybody like. Everybody should move. There. He like calls and says the weather's wonderful. I'm like, oh, shut up. The weather but, is wonderful. <laughs> there is a lot of rain. Typically more rain than here. Vancouver, Vancouver, Washington. Washington. Beautiful Pacific place. Northwest. It rains like every day, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's one of but the rainier Is rain really says a bad it. thing? Wear bucket hats. <laughs> you don't have to worry about rain. <laughs> but I, I don't believe in umbrellas. They're overrated. <laughs> but they're fluoride. He said, Craig was like, um, yep, something about they're no longer fluoridating their, fluoridating their water. It's kind of, I mean, if you really think about it, I don't know. It's like forcing people to drink, have fluoride, because isn't it in mm -hmm. your toothpaste? And they're like, yeah, take fluoride because it's good for you. So they like force people to put it in Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, if you don't want it, so. <laughs> so I don't know. Here's, here's another one that has nothing to do with fluoride, but did you guys, um, and it's kind of a serious note, that um, actually after 9-11, after the event, I mean an hour or whatever, all the planes were grounded. And so actually that was a time when there were no, no contrails <laughs> over the United States anyway. Uh, I don't know, worldwide, maybe planes were grounded too. And I need to look it up again, but it seems like I read something just vaguely, I'm remembering that they could actually do experiments to see what it was like with, without that man-made cloud. So anyway. Okay. So a few miscellaneous clouds. Um, so you won't need to know these. These aren't part of the 10, okay? 
The only one you might need to know, I sometimes I pick on, is lenticular. And actually, on the video, they called it alto lenticularis or something. Lenticular and alto lenticularis is the same thing. Okay, these are kind of some different versions. I have pictures coming up. Okay, so this is UNS, U, anyway, right there, this one? U-N-S, U-N-C-I-N-U-S, that's that one. It's called like Mare's Tales. Okay, and that's a cumulus practice. Okay, lenticular clouds kind of look like this. We saw them in the video. And actually they've been, I think this is right. I've heard that actually people have called them in for like a UFO sort of thing because they hover forever. <laughs> The one on the bottom left, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. This is about it. Yeah. Yeah. And they are especially with mountain ranges, though. I mean, kind of. That is a UFO. Yeah. Cloaking. <laughs> but their dynamic, what looks like it stays there forever, actually is kind of. Um, this is going downwind, and it's being replaced by more water vapor. So I think that's. So. Now, the eleventh cloud is undulatus asperatus. Undulatus asperatus. That's the eleventh cloud. Okay. It is a cloud, and I'll show you this is what it looks like. When I learned it um, a few years ago, it was just the asperatus cloud. Oh. Well, that's not right. There we go. <laughs> I know. Angry rolling cloud is first uh, first new type in 60 years is the heading. It was this fall, okay. So you know when we when we add to our 10 cloud types, it, it's a big hairy deal. When they demote Pluto, it's a big hairy deal. So the scientists that are in that area need to kind of come together and. and still about to be I know. Get over it. It was the right thing to do. Well, it's still there. We're going to go visit it like uh, this summer. Planet X, the one that we can't see. Oh, boy. So here it is, guys. Let's see what the, let's see what the video does. So I've got some still pictures. The first time I saw pictures, actually, um, it was over um, Cedar Rapids. So here's just some other pictures. Can't remember which one is over Cedar Rapids, but they all look a little different. All of these are that apparatus. And I bet you've seen some of those before. I mean, you know, they don't have to be kind of menacing like that, but just kind of a little dip. I know, I've read that, and I don't know if this is true or not, that like maybe this 11th type of cloud, actually it's, it's kind of a new cloud, relatively new on the scene, in that kind of the way our overall global hydrological cycle is working now, we're getting another type of cloud. So, notice how delicately I put that. Okay, so I have some pictures coming up. Um, sometimes of, uh, here's a banner cloud. Doesn't a banner cloud kind of remind you of a lenticular cloud? It looks like the mountain is like uh, on uh, smoking. There's your banner cloud. Again, it will hover for a long time, associated with mountains. Basically, it's kind of a high point, kind of being a sticking place for ore graphic lifting and kind of the, the condensation going downwind like that. Um, Mamantis clouds coming up, those are the pouchy things um, kind of on the bottom of the flat part of a thunderstorm uh, cumulonimbus cloud. Nacreous and noctilucent clouds. Here's the big thing about them. They actually do not occur in the, meso in the, the troposphere. Okay, these are upper level clouds. Most of our weather is confined troposphere. E that's it. Okay, but these actually occur in upper elevations. So here's some of those clouds. Of course, you recognize lenticular clouds again, right? Mamatis clouds on this figure over here, they're these pouchy looking things. I don't know if you can kind of see. Those are underneath basically what we call the anvil portion. Okay, we'll talk more about it. Have you ever seen a storm, a storm cloud basically go up and flatten out? Okay, dude. 
that flatten up part, basically, it ran out of troposphere. It's, it's bumping up against the tropopause, okay? And so underneath the anvil, you can sometimes see these little pouchy things. And then these are those really high-level clouds. These would be in the um, stratosphere. These would be in the stratosphere, and these would actually be in the mesosphere. Okay. So, there. Break time. So, thanks. That's how far I wanted to get. So, it'll take 10 minutes-ish. Come back for Friday.